How's it going everyone? Titanhawk here again and today I'm going to show you how to get the event sets in using the Start GG API. So let's go ahead and get right into it. To start with I'm already in here in our file getEventMatches.js. I'm going to go ahead and close our file explorer over there to the right and you'll see here I already have a little bit of code already put in place and this is because this is going to look very familiar if you watch some other videos in the series. As you can see, we have our general structure with all of our imports, with the sleep function that we're gonna be using to avoid the rate limits, and our start to G key. We're gonna do module that exports, our function name, async function. We're gonna take in an event ID. This one, instead of number of teams, we're gonna have number of matches. So that way, then when we go through all this, we'll be able to get going. You'll see here that our first query or our first fetch call is going to be very similar to what we had before with the total number of teams and entrants and other videos that previously made. Instead with this one here, we're going to want to get the total number of matches found. So already here in our friendly notepad, our queries.txt note, I have a query already set in place for how to get the total number of event sets. So in this query here, it's gonna do the same thing where it's gonna take in an event ID, a page and a per page. We're gonna use the same event ID that we've been using throughout the series. That's gonna go ahead and give us the sets. We only want to get the total number of pages or the total number of, inf or the total here, excuse me, and that will tell us how many matches or sets were played in this whole tournament. We don't need nodes as that is uh, not going to be any of any relevance to us in this first query. So we can go ahead, copy this, go ahead, paste this over here. And the path for the total number of matches is going to be, so num matches is equal to data.data.event dot sets dot page dot total and we can see here we can follow along so data is going to be our initial data variable everything then is wrapped around another data object we go here into event then we go here into sets and then from sets we are just looking for the page info so this should be uh, page info not just page good thing we check that and then total and this should be how we get the total number of matches and then we just want to sleep for one second that way we do not hit the rate limit now we're ready to begin writing our while loop to go through each of those sets and get all the data that we want from it so again it's gonna be very similar structure to some of our other files and the other code and the other functions that we've ran in this series for this while loop it's going to be the number of matches found is less than the number of matches total now I am using matches here to say, oh, you know, it's a match or a match played instead of a set played, but match and set mean the same thing for me. Sets is how it's stored in the uh, start GG API, as you can see here, but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to refer to them as matches. If you want to, uh, to refer to them as sets, you can do that as well, whatever works best for you. So now we're ready to go ahead and head over here into our queries.txt. We're going to want to take our notepad again, our little block of code that is going to call the fetch method. And now inside of here, inside of our query, I'm gonna go back here into queries.txt, I have the event sets query. So you're gonna notice here that this looks a little bit larger than some of the other ones, and that is okay. I'll walk you through it real quick. Same thing, we're gonna take in, we're gonna look for the event sets, we'll look for an event ID that we're gonna pass in. I'll give it a page, how, how much we, or what page we are currently on. How, my, how many sets we want per page. Then we want to go ahead and say, hey, we're gonna pass in the event into the, or the event ID into the event. We'll get our sets following our page parameters. This sort type, don't, uh, don't worry about this too much. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into nodes, which again is going to be a list. And then slots is also going to be a list. This is going to be, the, when it refers to slots here, if you were to look at a start GG bracket or tournament or event, and you see how there are multiple participants listed in a block, that is considered slots. So for a standard Rocket League tournament, it's always two slots per match or per set, right? You have team one and team two. That's what's gonna be here. So we know slots is only gonna be of size two, and then it's gonna contain the entrant, their name. So for in this case with Rocket League, it'll be the team name, 
the standing, which is going to hold a stats object, which is going to hold a score object, which is going to hold a value. And the value is what we're looking for. That's how that's how many games the uh, team or an entrant won in the match played. You'll see what I mean here when we print this out and we test this towards the end. But for now, we're going to go ahead and set our variables. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, copy and paste these up here because it is the exact same structure. Go ahead, tab these over. So page instead of one, we're gonna have this be page number. And for per page, I found that you can still obtain 50 at a time. So with this, now we're ready to go ahead and start handling our data. So again, with the previous things, there is the edge case where we get more, we get less data than what we are expecting. So we'll wanna make sure we do that loop condition check where we're expecting 50. But if the number of matches we uh, we have found plus the loop condition is greater than the total number of matches, then we know we have a chance to go out of bounds. So we'll instead say our loop condition is just equal to the number of matches minus the number of matches that we found. And with that, now we are ready to start going through our for loop using this loop condition. So we can go ahead and make a new line and go ahead and say for let i equals zero, let i be our iterator variable, i is less than the loop condition, i plus plus. Now in here is where we're gonna go ahead and start breaking down our data. So I'm gonna console.log, that way when we are all done with this, we'll be able to see in our console, a whole list of every single match or every single set that was played in this event. So first we need to say team one. So for us, this is going to be held in the path data dot data dot event dot sets dot nodes. I again, nodes is a list dot slots zero because remember, slots is now a list inside of node, so it's a nested list. Slots is now gonna hold our, our, our team information, all of our participant information. With Rocket League, we know there's only gonna be two participants and two entrants per set. So we know we can just do zero and one for our indexing there. And then we can go ahead and say dot entrant dot name. And then we can do space. And now I'm going to copy and paste all this again, because it's going to be pretty much most of the same path where it's going to be here where it says slot zero. But instead of doing entrant dot, or dot entrant dot name, we're going to do dot standing dot stats dot score dot value. And then we go ahead, go out, put a dash. And now it's going to be the exact same thing here on the other side. We're going to go ahead, copy and paste this again. A lot of copy and pasting here, I know, but this is the nice thing with the API is you're able to reuse a lot of your code. That way it's, you can fly through the coding process. So here we'll say, instead of it being slot zero, we'll say it's slot one. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to get our entrant name. And we'll go ahead, make a space and paste that over here. So already this right here, this line right here is going to go ahead and give us all of the information. It'll go ahead and run us through a for loop to get all the data that we get in one go. And then we'll be able to move on to the next set of matches and display that to the console. So this looks pretty good, except now the last thing we got to do is just make sure out here we do a dot catch just in case errors happen because we are engineers, we are programmers, and we are humans. We make mistakes. So we'll just say console.log, whatever the error is. That way we can troubleshoot if we need to. Now that we have that put in place, we'll go ahead and check to see, make sure we're still inside the while loop here. But now we just need to update our variables. So we'll go ahead and increase our page number by one. Let the number of matches found plus equal 50. And then the last thing will be to call sleep for one second. Uh, this should be, sorry, sleep.sleep .sleep 
for one second and then this will be able to go ahead and go through all of our data so this looks pretty good we'll go ahead and save and let's get ready to test it real quick i already noticed i almost forgot to do something when we copy and pasted it over here we did not change our entrant name instead of it being entrant or slot zero it should be slot one that way we go ahead and are able to actually get a different team name and not have it be the same team name but with two different scores so we'll go ahead and save that here and now we're ready to test so as you can see here i've already got the code imported here using require i'm going to call it event sets this that way the naming is consistent with the start gg api and we're ready to go ahead and test it so i already have the function call written here with our 755384 event ID that we obtained from here earlier on the series. Again, I'll put a link into the playlist in the description, and there'll also be a card in the top right corner throughout the video for you to go on and watch some of the other videos. So now all we have to do is just go ahead and call node index.js. And I will see you in a few seconds when this is done running. Again, the larger the tournament, the longer this is going to take the run, and that's perfectly fine. So I'll see you all in a little bit. Alrighty, welcome back everybody. Now, a couple things you'll notice here in this output, you're going to notice some negative ones, which is, you're probably wondering, how is that even possible? This is a tournament. You can't have a negative one. Well, apparently you can. Negative ones are start GG's way of symbolizing that a team no showed or did not or was disqualified from the tournament so a team can register for a tournament or an event but if they don't show up this is how it will be laid out in the database and their back end with a negative one so if you want you can add some additional filtering to make sure if the if there is a negative one that that match is not shown otherwise then just like that we have obtained every single match that was played in this specific start gg event and that concludes this tutorial so please leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out any uh, this don't miss out on any of my new videos until then my name is titan hawk 17 wishing you all a fantastic rest of your day whether wherever you may be